Kyle Busch settling in nicely for Joe Gibbs Racing. Hi and welcome to CBSSports.com's NASCAR Reports. I'm Amber Wilson. Well, we are just four races into this young season and Kyle Busch is sitting pretty. Busch was unceremoniously dumped by Hendrick Motorsports in favor of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And so far, the 22-year-old is giving Rick Hendrick something to think about. Since switching to Joe Gibbs Racing and now running in a Toyota, Kyle's finished all four races at fourth or better, won last weekend's Cobalt Tools 500, and is sitting at the top of the standings. Tony Storr joined him to make it a Gibbs 1-2 finish last weekend. As for Hendrick Motorsports, it hasn't been the start they had in mind. Dale Jr. is off to a fast start, now sixth. He finished third at Atlanta, but his teammates in the 24 and 48 cars, they are outside the top 12 for another week but they are gaining ground. Jeff Gordon came in fifth last weekend, causing him to shoot up from 23rd overall to 15th, while Jimmy Johnson sits just three points out of chase contention. It's still too early to really dive into the chase discussion, but there is plenty more to talk about, of course, which is why we bring in our very own NASCAR expert, Pete Bastoni. Pete, Chevy owned this series last year, but so far it's been Toyota scoring some early wins. What's been the difference for a brand that struggled so much last year? Well, the difference has been Joe Gibbs Racing, Amber. Since Joe Gibbs Racing made the move from Chevrolet to Toyota, at the end of last year, we've seen the entire Toyota camp improve. They were getting better at the end of 2007. Now you've got one of the powerhouse teams in the series running three cars, three of the top drivers in Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch, and Denny Hamlin. And not only is Joe Gibbs Racing doing well here in the first four races for Toyota, it's having a halo effect that the entire Toyota camp is doing better, and I expect to see them in victory lane several more times this season. Okay, Pete, Kyle Busch races in the Sprint Cup Nationwide and Craftsman Truck Series. Can the 22-year-old keep up with this busy racing schedule and still be successful? Well, I think he can, and as a matter of fact, he's thinking about adding to his schedule. You know, at this point, he's not going to run the entire Craftsman Truck Series schedule, but if he keeps doing as well as he's doing, Kyle told us over the weekend he might add more races and run the whole schedule. He might add more races and run the whole Nationwide Series schedule. Obviously, the Cup Series is his priority, but as, he, as long as he's having fun, he's going to continue to run these races, and as long as he's being competitive and winning races, I think you're going to find him finding a way to try to make all three work here in 2008, which would be unprecedented. All right, Pete, early on, we've already had some controversy. It wouldn't be NASCAR without it. Robbie Gordon, Carl Edwards, now NASCAR's official tire provider, Goodyear, is getting in on the action. Was Tony Stewart and other drivers right to criticize the performance of the tires used at Atlanta? Well, I think the drivers have a point. I, don't, I think Tony Stewart went way over the line. I, you know, Tony made it personal, whereas Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. and some of the other ones had comments about the tire, and I think the way that they... Uh, communicated those comments was was a little more in line than what Tony did. However, I still believe it's a combination of the car, the brand new Sprint Cup car, which again, we're, everyone's forgetting, it's the first time that car raced at Atlanta Motor Speedway. So even though we've been at another mile and a half at Las Vegas the week before, the setups are different. And I think it was a combination of Goodyear maybe not having the exact right tire, but the team's not having the right setup. And the teams that were able to adjust throughout the day, Jimmy Johnson was almost two laps down at one point. They were able to adjust. He made a pretty decent finish out of it. So I think it's a combo platter. I think there'll be more testing, obviously, as we go along. And uh, hopefully when we get to Texas, the next mile and a half, we'll have this thing straightened out. At least the drivers will feel a little more comfortable about the tire they're running. All right, Pete, on to next week. It's the first short track race of the year at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Food City 500. Will we see a more competitive race than last year? Who do you got, Pete? Well, I guess I'm in the minority, Amber, because I thought the race we had in August at Bristol was pretty competitive on the new racing surface, uh, the side-by-side -side racing. We didn't get the bumping people out of the way that you know we've seen at Bristol over the years, but I think the drivers loved it. I thought we had some great racing, and I think we're going to see that even better on Sunday afternoon uh, in Thunder Valley. The track has had a little more time to cure, and I think we will see some side-by-side -side racing. I'm looking for Richard Childress Racing to do well this week. They had three drivers in the top ten at Atlanta, and uh, their three guys run very well at Bristol. Kevin Harvick actually won there in 2005. Dale Jr. loves Bristol. He's off to a great start with Hendrick Motorsports. But Matt Kenseth, they can never count him out. Roush Fenway Racing has done so well. Kenseth has won before at Bristol. Those are the guys I look to watch when we go to Thunder Valley on Sunday. All right. Thanks, Pete. And we look forward to hearing from you this weekend from Bristol. Don't forget to come back next week when we take a look at Martinsville. But for now, if you missed anything here today, 
Stop, refresh, and rewatch for Pete Pistoni. I'm Amber Wilson.